Internal poverty is the poverty of the soul. It describes the unmoved soul. The soul that has been created but has still failed to realize why. It is the soul that lives a purposeless life. The heart that beats but has already died. Because while this body cries and bleeds and feels pain from the material world, the soul is untouched by these things. There is only one thing that can cut or stab or impoverish the soul. There is only one thing that can kill it to deprive it of its only one true need, to be close to its originator, to be near God. Spiritual deprivation is the true impoverishment. True poverty is standing poor on the day of judgment. Despite this reality, we continue to live this life, feeding our bodies, but starving our souls. When a body dies, we cry. But our hearts are unmoved by those bodies which are still alive, but whose hearts and souls have already died because of the alienation from that which gives life God. What impoverishes and kills the heart? It is allowing the heart to love anything as it should only love God. The heart was created by and for God. The heart was created to know and love God. The heart was created to be given to God, to be filled with God. The heart that is given to or filled by any other thing suffers the most painful impoverishment and death. The heart that is owned by this life is a prisoner of the worst kind. The heart that is owned by any other master than the master of masters is the weakest of all slaves. That is true oppression, true death, true poverty. As human beings, we enslave ourselves to different things. Some of us in here are enslaved to money. Some of us have enslaved our hearts to other people. We love them as we should only love Allah. Some of us are enslaved to status or to our careers. I tell you to ask yourself, what do you love most? Most of us in this room will say that we love God most. We say this with our tongues, we say this in our minds, but our hearts, our actions say otherwise. How do you know? Ask yourself, what is your refuge? When you're most broken, where do you go? When you're afraid, where do you hide? When you need, who do you ask? What do you fear most? What do you stay up at night worrying about? Who, what makes you cry most? What do you think about most? What occupies your mind in Salah? Is it really God? Is it really Allah on our mind most? Is it really your fear of standing before him that makes you cry in your bed? No, probably not. It's the person who left you, the money you lost, the career you couldn't have, the raise you didn't get. What are you afraid of most? Just the thought of losing what thing causes you so much anxiety that you feel it physically. Is it your husband, your wife, your money, your job? 
Is it your image? Is it your figure? What is it? When you're given a choice, what do you do? When Allah says to dress and act a certain way, and then society says the opposite, which do you choose? Who defines beauty for you? Who defines success? When Allah says that interest is haram, but your financial ambitions command otherwise, when society's standard for the size of your house or the brand of your car command otherwise, which do you choose? Who defines richness? Who defines poverty? Brothers and sisters, the storm is coming. Seek refuge in the only place that refuge exists. Seek refuge in Allah. You and I know what day we were born, but none of us know what day we will die. And many people think that we can live our lives however we want, and then at the time of death just say, La ilaha illallah. But at the time of death, the tongue cannot speak except what the heart commands. Whatever is in the heart will come out. The impoverished heart will have nothing but love of dunya to speak about on that day. If our heart is empty of Allah during our life, how can it be full of Allah during our death? If our heart is full of love of this life, love of status, love of wealth, love of the creation over the Creator, it is that which will speak. If in your life you carried only La ilaha illallah, that truly there is no refuge, no shelter but Him, then and only then will the tongue be given permission to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Allahumma ja'alna minhum, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ